how is JC different from when you first got your first look yeah. at him in person on the practice field to now as you prepare to, you know, not see him again uh, on the field for a while? What's interesting about rookies when you first get them, uh, the rate of improvement kind of jumps early because you know, they're they're given so much information. They're given a lot of new tools. And so, you know, good athletes like JC adapts really fast. So you can see his improvement over the course of the last few weeks that we've had him. So that's a real positive. Although, you know, there's a lot of things he's still learning and needs to get better at and he's working towards that. So it's always a work in progress when you first get a guy like him. And uh, I think nothing really comes to fruition until you're in training camp and everything's live. You know, the speed's faster. The looks are quicker. Uh, nobody's pulling off of blocks, so you've got to, you're going to have to finish blocks. So it becomes a little more different, obviously, when you, you get into that phase of uh, a preseason. Like, oh, I'm sorry. What do you like about uh, Ajuku and Charles, the guys who are on fighting yeah. for spots on the right side of that line? What, what are yeah. they showing you? I know it's it's early because you don't have the pads on and all, but well, uh, first things first, and that would be the classroom. You know, they've got tremendous passion. You know, studying the game, preparing for each day. You know, they'll get the scripts early and they'll jump on their iPads at night. They'll text questions in to make sure that they're all on the same page in terms of assignments and adjustments. So they're really into that aspect. They study a lot of their own personal cut-ups that we make for them and they give feedback to that. So that's always positive. And then just their interaction and how active they are in the meeting room. They're well engaged, really great eye contact. You know, and they're, they just have a real passion for football. So the, I'm really pleased with the group as a, as, as a whole. But when you watch uh, guys like J.O., it's really fun to watch him improve and get better with reps. It's been for us with J.C., he spent a lot of yeah. time extra. Uh, he mm -hmm. had to play on his way back in yeah. after spending time at A. That um, impressed you, maybe shows how much it means to him? You know, he's, uh, he's built a little bit differently from a mental aspect from most first-rounders that I've been around. He'll, he'll always do the extra. He's always out here every day. Of course, you know, the story about Rand chasing him out of the rain here a couple weeks ago. But he's always doing things to improve his craft. Which is which is fun. It's enjoyable as a coach. You know, you just you yearn for players like that. You know, in your room because they're great examples for the other people, for the other guys in the room to learn from. But he's he's um, really obsessive about giving get everything correct. He's a perfectionist that way. So it's fun to watch him go back out on the field and correct something that he wants to get better at. When it comes to Nicholas Petit for a coach, uh, just what has mm -hmm. he been like in the film room? We've clearly not seen him out here, but we know he's. Yeah, he's been great in the film room, in, in the classroom. He's been outstanding. Uh, unfortunately, you know, he's still on the mend. So uh, we haven't had that luxury of getting those reps from the classroom to the grass. But he's excellent. He's got uh, really good awareness. Uh, he asks really good questions. Uh, he can anticipate, you know, adjustments when we're talking through schematics on the, on the board or just in general off the film. So he's been a real pleasure. And I'm excited to get him in training camp when he's healthy and see what he can do. Is he behind the gun at all when it comes to, you know, maybe I wouldn't not. say so. Okay. I wouldn't say so. I think so. I think in all fairness, everybody competing for spots and jobs. I, I, I think that's the case. I think that, you know, um, you know, Sadiq, you know, Rad, Dan, all those guys are, are working extremely hard. Uh, there's a lot of versatility there, guys that we can mix and match at, at the guard spot and also at center. So I'm still kind of looking for the two and the three center, trying to find ways to build that depth and uh, build that contingency because, as you well know, that can go pretty quick uh, if you do hit that injury snag. So we're, we're trying to build depth there, trying to get more experience. So we're cross-training all those guards at the center position. But I think overall on the right side, yeah, we're just looking for guys to come in and compete. Obviously, when Jalen gets a little bit more healthier and, and when Nick gets back out there and then J.O.'s out there, it, it should be a lot of fun to watch these guys get after it.
talk about JC being mm -hmm. kind of wired differently. Was that something you guys mm -hmm. identified in the pre-draft process, or were you just yeah. surprised by it when he got out here? No, we weren't surprised at all. You know, that was the word coming out of Alabama. So uh, just everything that he does, talking to the people, you know, our scouts gave us really good background on him. So his makeup is outstanding in that regard. So he's really a, a guy that's, you know, like I said, he's incessant about getting everything right. You know, he's just, he's just come, like uh, – compulsive, you know, behavior where he just wants to be perfect. And, and that's great. But he also, you know, just visiting with him, he just needs to relax sometimes and just play out his role, you know, just take a deep breath, you know, and let's just get things mastered one, one thing at a time. He was fortunate. He had a, a good amount, very similar to um, who I coached last year, Aiden, uh, in Vegas. Those guys got live reps, um, and you can't, you can't get that. Um, and taking year one to year two into that, and it's just growing, molding himself into situations, um, you know, intent of the play call, who we're playing against, personnel matchups, all that stuff you just start building. Um, and that's that's what we're doing right now. He's new playbook, some new guys around him, um, and moving that into year two and getting some positive, you know, uh, results. What I guess have you seen? I, I know Brian talked about the competition behind Will. How have you seen – I guess both Mason and Malik do this offseason. Uh, they've been they've been great, um, great teammates. First of all, work hard, come prepared every day. Have questions when we're outside the building. They'll send me a text call. Um, I haven't seen anybody take a day off, you know, and that's important because we all know it's a it's a short span for anybody, and you just got to put your best foot forward and put as much work as you can. And I'm excited to see those guys uh, once we get the. You know, put some put some pads on and go out there and take the governor off and let him go. You know, play against other other guys. Having not worked with Will before, now doing it for a couple of months. What have you learned about? Uh, he is um, again great teammate. Um, he's uh, he's intense. I enjoy that. Works really really hard. Um, I like he's got he's got great leadership skills. You know, he's he's constantly talking to different position groups, um, doing things with them. I think that's important outside of just going out and just throwing the football around. Um, but, the, you know, and he just he, – he's one of the most coachable people I've ever been around, and I, I respect that, man. He's, he's been really good. Do you tell him in this time how much does he need to stay in it versus get a little time away before the real – Yeah, there's are. a fine line with that. Um, you know, he'll – we'll have a, a schedule for him that we'll kind of talk through. But, yeah, it's spend some time with the family, relax a little bit. And kind of, there'll be a certain time to rev it back up, you know, and, and hit it, hit it primed for, you know, September. Well, is there, uh, I'm a big believer, right? We want to need them all. And you get into a game, you know, and they know, guys know. Like, coach, I've had guys, I've coached Adrian Peterson and, and you know, and, and, and uh, Afro Morris and guys like that. And all of a sudden, the guy gets a hot hand, and then that other back is like, hey, coach, leave him in there, coach. <laughs> he, he's he rolling. And, um, you know, it's a game by game situation, but I feel like, you know, and I feel like we have two two legit guys that can really help our team on first, second, and third now. And when you have guys like that, you know, mm -hmm. as a coach, how much do you have to emphasize, okay, this position is still play with patience. Mm -hmm. You don't have to try to hit that home run every time. Yeah, it's one of those things where you just, you know, I tell them all the time, go find us four and a half, and everything else will take care of itself. And that's the fun part. Is uh, those guys have a, they have similar traits, but they're very different in terms of how they play. You know, um, Tajay is he's like the Tasmanian devil, man. Like he, his cuts, he's explosive. He's he runs with this anger, and and this is the first time. Obviously, I've coached uh, Pollard. I've watched him being in the NFC East for ten years. He's one of the smoothest, <laughs> smoothest running backs that I've coached. And I'd be like, hey man, is that brother? Is he really running? And then you look at the tape and all that. Excuse me, I almost said curse word, but <laughs> that he he's running, you know. And so uh, in that retrospect, they both are tremendous players, and we're glad to have them. What have you seen behind those two that the group of backs you have, and mm -hmm. what do you tell them about trying to earn a spot and, and opportunity? That's a great question. Uh, special teams are going to be huge. Absolutely huge. You know, that third guy, he's not only got to be able to help us, you know, uh, win games from the running back spot, but 
what can he do do for us on special teams? And uh, that's going to be uh, critical in terms of our decision, you know. And is he, is he a core guy, which we hope that he can be, meaning playing on all four phases? What type of returnability does he give us? Does he give us any? Um, so in that respect, I always lean on that special team coach, and I tell him, hey, this is a guy that I like. He said, well, coach, this is a guy I like, and hopefully we come to some type of uh, agreement, okay, where we got a guy that can help us both offensively and also uh, on special teams. You know, he played a good amount in the preseason last year, then he got some opportunities in the regular season, so he's put tape out there in the NFL. So you can see that he's a, a talented player. He's got size, he's got explosion, he's got rush instinct, rush feel, and he's a hard worker. So um, it's exciting to work with Caleb because um, he knows he can win with moves and work edges and use his hands and also win with power. So um, it's just challenging him and finding the right type of drills to work with him to help him grow in those areas. And then really, you know, when training camp starts and the preseason game starts, now you really get an opportunity to do stuff live and, and improve. Because right now that's not really the time of year, you know, for, for real one-on-one -on -one rushes. Do you have a number in mind or a range in mind of what the optimal number of guys to carry at your position is? I know some teams are lighter, some teams are heavier. Just Yeah, that's not really my call. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, you, you would assume you'd have like three or four up for a game, okay. right, to have some depth, have some backup guys that can play special teams. But after that, um, it's really not my call. That's something that, you know, <clears throat> Brian and Rain would handle. Yeah. How do you go about developing depth, depth when you don't have games to play? Like these guys who don't have the experience, how do you see the signifiers of them getting better? Um, well, I think, you know, you have to have really good individual drills and to develop the different skill sets that they need to play the position. Um, so when you're playing on the edge, whether it's an outside linebacker or a DN, there's different things you have to do. Um, and you need to have good drills that allow them to experience those things. And then we have enough walk-through type of scenarios. Like I thought Callie uh, did a really good job with the schedule, giving us a lot of walk-through reps to work 11 on 11 type stuff where you can't go full speed, but you can still work the techniques that were going full speed and individual. And then, you know, by doing that, you should give guys enough opportunity to see, okay, these are what the drills are supposed to do. These are how they apply in 11 on 11 setting. And then, you know, putting guys in different positions so that you can have some depth. So that's kind of, yeah. it's, it's what you do in this time of year in OTAs and, sure. and minicamp. When we're watching those individual drills, the guy that stood out, at least when I've been watching, is Thomas Rush. Yeah. What have you seen from him so far? And what do you think about him being a, a depth player, rotational guy in this lineup? Yeah, I mean, Tommy's, um, He's a hard worker. He's real intentional with everything he does. He's terrific in the classroom, real detailed. And uh, on the field, he's a guy that just gets better. He can listen to coaching, take coaching, and apply it almost immediately. So you see a player do that within a drill. Hey, do this. Try this. He does it. It gets better. Instantaneous feedback. And the next time he does it, he's starting at a different uh, baseline because he's already doing it at a higher level the next time, and he's consistently building. And I think you've seen that with him in our drill work, that he consistently gets better. He focuses on one thing, improves that, finds another thing, improves that. And, you know, you watch him do one drill two months ago, watch him do it now, it's like, wow, Tommy, you've you done a heck of a job improving. So, yeah, it's exciting dude, to, to work with. Harold, the same there, too? Would you, would you speak the same with him as far as picking up things quickly? How's this progress? Yeah, I mean, um, Jalen gave him a lot of credit um, as a rookie coming in, being drafted, and uh, having a real professional and mature attitude. He's a really good listener, um, really detailed in the classroom, takes great notes, and then out on the field. I mean, you can coach him, give him instant feedback. He can apply it, and he can really build on things quickly. So, uh, yeah, Jalen's done a heck of a job in that regard, learning the defense, learning the techniques, and improving. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be the first year, just how teams do things and just learning the more rules while we're going. Because we really don't know everything because nobody haven't did it. But I think the UFL or USFL did it. So they got a little something. But the, the, the rules are kind of different. And I know you touched on Tajay. How special has, has that made your rookie experience having him here with you? It's amazing, you know, um, just going back to the draft day, it was when he didn't, well, I knew already, he didn't know uh, I got the call. He was like, we're going to whoop y'all butt. And then they come around, he's like, oh, crap. And then he's like, yeah, let's go. But it just going back to uh, the same drills that we did back at um, Tulane, just 
early morning, late nights doing rehab, stretching, and just catching jugs and tennis balls. But it's amazing. I just told them before uh, other other news people before they left that I'm the big brother before I got here. He's the little brother. Now he's the big brother since he got a, and I'm the little brother since he got a year under his belt. And I'm learning the process and just learning how to maneuver different things. What was the adjustment period Thank you. like for you when you first got here? And how much more comfortable do you think you've gotten along the way? Come again? Yeah, what, what was the adjustment period like playing in the NFL when you first got here? And how do you think, how have you kind of settled in and gotten more comfortable? I probably, the biggest thing is just making sure that I know where to be and what time to be there. You know, the difference between here is in college, um, you got to, when you, when you get in trouble, uh, uh, late to a meeting, you got to run stadiums, but here you're getting fined. So you got to make sure. So my first day on Teamworks, I always had my phone in my in my hand just saying like, oh, I got this at this time, this time, this time, making, setting a long, long class so I wouldn't miss. So once I got that one week underneath my belt, it was it was a piece of cake. And how's the room been, veterans and, and group of young guys too, how they kind of embraced you and you guys learned from one another? Oh, it's been great, you know, um, just the biggest thing that I learned is since I've been here, the NFL is all about, like, the guys in the NFL is all about helping you, you know, even from, from the vets to, to the guys who got three years plus on their belt, it's just, since I've been here, you know, they, they, they took all us in and just helped us learn the offense and, and learn keys to what the defense do and how we can see it faster, you know, it's just been amazing from the vets and the coaches. What about uh, what were your mindset heading into camp? Yeah, you know, I just come back expecting myself to compete um, and make plays. You know, everything else that's up to them, that's th their decisions. But I just want to come back and feel confident and competing and making plays and feel confident with my play and where I should be. Was there a little bit of an adjustment period for you first got here? And how did you feel? Right. Did you feel right yeah, there was there was definitely an adjustment period. Uh, like I was saying, it's a new city, new team, a whole new level of football. Uh, so I definitely feel like there was an adjustment period for me. But you know, just like anything else, if you just you know repeatedly do it, you get more and more comfortable. Um, and I feel like throughout these few weeks here during the OTAs, I've gotten more and more comfortable uh, with different things that I've been asked to do. I guess a veteran wants to kind of show you the way. Obviously, you guys are competing, but how has he been as far as showing you the way a little bit? Yeah, yeah, he's definitely been a huge help in, in showing me the way. Um, we're in film room or on the field. If he, you know, notice something that he wants to help me out with, you know, he speaks up and, and kind of gives me pointers um, on different things. You know, obviously, he's an experienced guy, more experienced than me. Uh, he started uh, with the team last year. So, obviously, he, he understands the game. He's a very, very smart guy. Uh, so he's somebody that I've definitely been listening to whenever, you know, he speaks up and says something. And what will you do between now and the camp starts? And, I mean, what's the mindset got to be going into the camp? Yeah, well, obviously just staying in shape, um, training and preparing myself for training camp, but also uh, staying in the playbook, you know, getting my mental game right and, and you know, kind of getting ready to, you know, make calls and, and different things like that. Um, but also just take some time off, you know, and, and, and kind of reset, you know, and, and reset the mind to kind of get ready because it's, it's a big, big camp coming up, probably one of the most important camps of my football career. Um, it's been great, man. Denard, great man, um, great coach. And for me, um, he just reminded me of my high school coach. You know, um, he's going to stay on you. He's going to show you that he cares about ball and he cares about you and just making you better as a young man, as an individual and outside of football as well. And for me, man, I'm just thankful to have him in my corner and just grateful for him. And um, he told me since he saw me on my 30 visit, even I didn't know I was coming here, but he told me if I was to come here, he'll be on me and he's going to stay on top of me. And for him, um, I wanted that. You know, um, I love being hard coached and that's that's what he does. And for me, just taking that knowledge that he gives me, and it's been making me a better player. What's what's comfort level like for you as you as you kind of find your found your way here in the first uh, couple of months on the job? Um, it's been good. You know, um, at first, you know, I came out here, had a lot to learn. You know, I was still struggling with um, simple things, but as the days going on, you know, I started getting better. Um, Started being in my play a bit more, you know, started getting comfortable, asking more questions, um, asking the vets, asking my coaches. And for me, um, my confidence is a long way up from when I came out here day one. So I feel great, and um, I'm finally getting my swagger back, you know, and I feel good. What will you do between now and the, and the time camp starts to be ready? Um, I'm grinding. I'm grinding from here on out, you know. Um, 
that's the main thing, you know, keep the main thing, keep the main focus, the main thing, and that's to come back in the greatest shape that I've ever been in for training camp and come with a mindset, you know, come with a chip on my shoulder and play with that edge and have that confidence and that energy and just be the best version of myself. I know if I'm being the best version of myself, then I'm making our team better. You had a pick today, didn't you? And then you also you gave up a play where you mm -hmm. ended up doing push-ups. I, mean, yes. I guess that's kind of part of ups and downs and adjusting to the to the league. No doubt. You know, um, it's always about that short-term memory. So, you know, just because I made a play don't mean give up the next one or slack on the next play. So, for me, um, it's just... Just working on that consistency, you know, um, making sure that I'm keeping my technique the same, I stand to it, and um, just knowing that I got to have better eyes, you know, um, that's I think that's why I got beat on that play, but that's something that I already knew before that rep, so for me it's just about consistency and just standing to it. How much you picking the brain of some of the vets in the room, and how much do you say you're learning from them? A lot, a ton, a ton, a lot. Um, Guys like Cheeto and Snee, man, um, those guys that I watched, you know, before I got into this league. So for me to be on the same team as those guys and be a part of them, um, it's a dream come true, and I'm just grateful to have those two. And I just try to take up all the knowledge that they could give me, and it's been helping me with my game. And, you know, I've been learning a lot when it comes to formations or releases that I'm getting, and those guys have been helping me a lot with that. Oh, it's a really it's a it's a big difference just schematic wise and just as far as being pro style and playing on tempo. It's kind of night and day, but I got a little taste of this my freshman year with Jim Chaney, uh, kind of the pro style offense, understanding how plays are going to be called, understanding you actually have to know the, the scheme of, of plays. So it's definitely a, a learning curve as far as what I've been doing the past three years, but football is football. Everybody runs the same things. It's just in different formations, different you know terminology and things of that nature. Rookies, they talk about the NFL speed of practice. Mm -hmm. and I'm guessing y'all's college practices are pretty quick too. How does yeah. that uh, it, it's different. You know, it's it's more so walk through tempo, just understanding like where you're supposed to be, where you're supposed to get lined up, being in the right spot. I guess that's why the speed of the game is so different because everybody's in their right spot. And I think you know, with these practices here, it's definitely a difference. Everybody's on on cue. Everybody's playing on the same same level and same speed. Mm -hmm. You and Tony bonded much over Memphis stuff yet? Not, uh, not yet, but uh, I've kind of just been, you know, in rookie mode, just yeah. asking them questions about football, and hopefully we'll get, to, get get the chance to hang out sometime outside of the facility. But I really just been in rookie mode, just trying to soak up as much information as I can. Dylan was saying you two are rooming together, kind of bouncing off of each other. Just, <laughs> yeah. What's that experience like going through it with him, having all these people to learn from? Yeah, man, it's 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 really a great. Uh, it's a great opportunity just to be able to learn from other people and then as well as come in with Dylan and, you know, just study the playbook, motivate each other, compete with each other. Each other. So it, it's been a great. It's been great.